Okay guys, I'm doing something a little different. Um, this is kind of a plug for New Egg, so if you don't like New Egg or you don't like plugs, uh, you can discontinue the movie, the video now. Uh, in 10 minutes I'm going to try to give you guys kind of an understanding of how to build your own computer, uh, save you hundreds if not thousands of dollars on purchasing of a computer. You can customize it exactly how you want and um, gives you the option of setting up for upgradability in the future which is something a lot of people overlook like you can get a really good I mean you can get a good computer for like five six seven hundred dollars from like Compaq or HP or Dell or whatever one of those but you don't realize that in three years when you want to upgrade your computer you have to get a whole new computer so uh, the last computer I had I had for Man, I, I've paid originally a thousand dollars, but I made sure that it was upgradable, and I think I continued using it for nine or ten years. But I, I kept upgrading it. I probably spent another thousand on it to kind of keep it updated, and then it finally just finally it ran out of upgradability, and I had to switch to the next computer. Um, so okay, so just to let you guys know. There's a certain order that you want to do things. The first thing you want to do is you want to look for the CPU chip. Even though the motherboard is the main part of the computer, you kind of want to start with the CPU chip. My personal preference is AMD. Um, so you go to processors, desktops, uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Uh, AM2 Plus uh, is the CPU chip that is the primary one right now. Um, it kind of uh, encompasses AM2 and AM3. So, um, you'll also need a motherboard that can handle it. Um, so here we go, we got triple core processors, actually triple core and quadruple core. A lot of people wonder, why do I need more than like one or maybe two cores? And you'd be surprised, the more cores you have, the more you use them. Um, I personally prefer quad core, so I go with quad core. Um, the one I bought is this one right here, the 9850, and the 9950 doesn't even exist didn't even exist when I bought it, so it's frustrating. And so I would definitely get this one. And as you can see right here, it says 125 watts, so that's pretty intensive. So you'll need to have a relatively good power supply. All of, a lot of these are 125 watts. Um, so this is what I would recommend. But there's also the i7 chips on Intel, which are more powerful. They are more powerful, but they're also quite a bit more expensive. Um, I find that the AMDs are best bang for the buck. Okay, so. Once you p pick out your um, your uh, CPU, you go to motherboards. That's the next phase, and you got to make sure you have. Let's say, let's stick with the thing AMD motherboards because it was the AMD Phenom. Um, then you right here you see the socket type, and you don't want to pick AM2 if you picked an AM2 plus CPU chip. So you pick the AM2 plus slash AM2. Um, what I usually do is I go by most reviews. Okay, so it kind of shows, and then what I kind of start doing is, well, what you would do first of all, is, like if you're wanting to deal with something that's not exactly an ex uh, a good example, like let's say that you're dealing with an Intel board instead of an AMD board, um, what you would first do is you'd sort by the most reviews, and then you'd see you'd see the ones that have the most reviews, and maybe if it's four or five eggs right there, and then you compare it to the price because if it has high reviews and whatever price range you're looking for. Let's say you want it really cheap, you're just wanting to kind of have a basic computer, you would go for the 799. Then you have something right here that's basically the same amount of reviews, same rating, but it's more expensive, which kind of means that it's going to be a slightly better uh, motherboard. Uh, if it was really expensive but a terrible motherboard, it of course wouldn't get very high ratings. And sure enough, the AMD 9790FX is the one that I would recommend, and the Platinum version is a very nice version. Uh, as you can see right here, it even confirms that it can handle it because it says CPU type Phenom FX and Phenom. Um, another one to look at very specifically when you're trying to pick what you're going to do after this, the next step would be memory. So you look right here and you see DDR21066. That's the type of memory that it can handle, and then this is the amount of memory that it can handle. If it said something like two gigabytes, you might be hesitant, um, because a lot of times, ooh, this right here, this is kind of an interesting. I mean, every once in a while they have, um, I mean, look, look at the price here, uh, sixty bucks, and then it can hold thirty-two gigs, and. Um, it can hold, handle all that stuff. Um, so what you can do in this situation, if you want to like check it out, you click both of those things and you compare it. 
Okay, let's see what we got here. Let's see, let's see. Um, okay, so that's fine. Maybe this is just a better deal by a lot. It's got better chip to... It's... Who cares? One less of those. Um, wow, this might be really pretty sweet. They're both certified for Vista, which is pretty important. It's important to try and get as many parts as you can certified for Vista, especially well, I mean, if you're going to use Vista. HDMI... Wow! <laughs> this might be the... Oh, okay. This um, north gate, or I think it's what it's called, north bridge, um, is slightly weaker than that one. So the motherboard isn't quite as responsive. But um, it's still got... Um, well, it's still got a basic RAID setup. This has got a better RAID setup, and it can handle crossfire. This one can't handle crossfire. So there's just kind of, This is the most important thing, um, to look through the specs of your motherboard to see what you're going to be doing on your other parts. So, okay. So that's the motherboard. You decide whatever you want on that. The next part is the memory. Uh, it used to be that memory had all sorts of different kinds of voltages, but now it's not so important. I don't recommend using this little platform thing. Just go to desktop memory. And then um, check out um, uh, 240. <laughs> I don't exactly. Okay, so I can go from right here. Speed. We want DDR 1066, um, DDR2 1066, because that's what our motherboard could handle. So let's just. You want to go right to the the best you can, the best speed you can get.